Welcome back to my channel. I'm James. Today we're going to be reviewing and deep diving into Dragon Slayer, the brand new 4K Ultra HD release from Paramount Studios. Now a little hidden tidbit is a lot of people weren't aware that this is actually a Walt Disney production as well. It was actually a joint venture with Paramount Studios and Walt Disney Studios. And I've always felt as though this is kind of a live action Disney animated title. And here's what I mean by that. A lot of the like Sleeping Beauty, Black Cauldron, those types of animated films have a lot in common with Dragon Slayer and the overall feel of it is very similar to as if they would have taken those earlier Disney animated films that are fantasy adventures and made it into a live action film which they did with Dragon Slayer back in 1981 is when this actually came out. And it's a very fun and enjoyable fantasy adventure. It's got some great practical effects, especially for the time period. Again, remembering this is 1981 when this came out. Now to show you the native images that are pulled directly from these discs, I'm gonna show you those up here above. As always, those are the native images that I pull directly from these discs without all the artificial things your TV can do to kind of pump up color saturation or change the contrast. This is what's natively present on these discs. So if you have a professionally calibrated or properly calibrated high-end display, you're gonna see an image that's very similar to that other than that those images up there are basic HDR. So entry level HDR, there's actually different levels of HDR if you know anything about the technology. There's HDR, which I consider standard basic HDR. Then you get HDR10, HDR10+, and Dolby Vision. The image that you see above is always basic entry level HDR, which is standard HDR, which is the first HDR that's on there because that's all that YouTube's algorithm allows. So it takes all those Dolby Vision, HDR10+, HDR10, and dumbs it down so that way it's only displaying standard HDR or basic HDR, however you want to call it. But anyhow, that's what you're seeing up above is those native images. Now I will tell you the image on this does look pretty darn nice, and I was impressed with some of the things they had done on it. Though there are a few negative things I did encounter on this that kind of surprised me weren't caught before these were actually produced. But I'll get to those here in just a few minutes. Now, if you haven't done so yet, make sure to go down and give this video a like and a thumbs up for me. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. Just like with this review, all of these image comparisons that I exclusively do and all of this content that I release here on my YouTube channel, there's tons of early and exclusive reviews from studios that send me things early, just like I recently did All Quiet on the Western Front. I actually got that in two and a half weeks before the release date. I did that review here about four or five days ago, and that doesn't even come out for another week and a half from now. So if you haven't checked out that review, you're gonna wanna check out that early review. But as always, I get things sent to me from studios early to dive into, test, and analyze for all of you here on my YouTube channel. So make sure if you haven't done so yet, make sure to give this video a like and a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. Now with Dragon Slayer on 4K, this does get a native 4K 2160p on this 4K Ultra HD disc. Now as I had referenced earlier, it does come with Dolby Vision and HDR10. Between the two of them, the Dolby Vision and the HDR10, I didn't really notice any variance. They were very similar image presentations, very similar color gradings. Everything looked very similar across both of them. I'd say it's less than a 1% difference because literally it was almost impossible to see anything different between both of them. So you will enjoy both the Dolby Vision and HDR10 similarly on this. And that's a good news for those of you that only have access to HDR10 because you're not missing out on something that's drastically different for the Dolby Vision side of it. Though I do just enjoy the Dolby Vision technology just a little bit more. So in my case, I usually try to watch things in Dolby Vision depending on which display I'm using to test things out on. Now, this new 4K was created from a new 4K scan and 4K restoration of the original 35mm camera negatives. And it was approved by the original director, Matthew Robbins himself. So they went back, did the work, had him go through it, approve it to make sure this appears the truest to the original form and representation of what this film was supposed to look like. I will say the 4K restoration and 4K scan they did on this does look very good. Now, negative things I did encounter when I started doing all my testing on this is there is a couple very brief and very slight scenes that some slight DNR was applied. Most noticeably, if you're kind of one of those folks like me that notices the difference between DNR is applied versus if it has natural film grain, things like that, you'll notice it in the final battle sequence that you'll notice it's a bit less film grain and you'll notice that that DNR was applied to it and you can kind of see it's just kind of a more smooth picture with lacking a bit of film grain 
That's because in that scene they tried to control some of the film grain from the original camera negative by using DNR. Now, it's not horrible, it's not the worst thing you're ever gonna see, and it's not one of those that I'm gonna say is absolutely horrendous, it's not. It's very light on it, because you can still see the film grain, it's just not as present as the film grain is through the rest of the film. Now, talking about the film grain itself through the rest of it, it's very stable, it's very filmic. There was only some slight fluctuations I encountered very, very briefly that you're probably never even going to notice because of how nice of a job they did with this 4K restoration. Now, because of the great job they did implementing the Dolby Vision and HDR10 for this, it does have brilliant whites and inky blacks with no black crush and no digital noise present. So that's good news for this release as well. Now, if after you get done watching this review and hearing my review score at the end, you decide you want to buy Dragon Slayer on either this limited edition steelbook set or in the regular edition, which comes in a standard case. I will link both of the direct links for both copies in the description section and as a pinned comment in the comment section below. I've always done all the work for all of you on every single one of these videos I create here on my YouTube channel. I put the direct links from Amazon in the description section and as a pinned comment in the comment section below every single video. Those links never cost any of you even a penny extra. It's on sale for the same price as everywhere, but those do help to support the creation of these videos just a tiny bit. So make sure if you do decide you're wanting to buy either edition of Dragon Slayer, make sure to click on those links I've posted in the description section and as a pinned comment in the comment section below. Now, like I talked about recently in my Red Eye review, that came out just a couple of days ago, and I was recently talking about when directors and cinematographers use camera lenses. So that's things like lenses or filters they'll use to purvey a scene in kind of either a dreamy or hazy-like appearance. This film does employ those in numerous scenes throughout it to give it kind of a more fantasy, foggy, hazy, dreamy-like appearance. That is not something wrong. You can still see the film grain fine through that. It's just you have to understand in those scenes they're using camera lenses and things to make it look hazier and softer on purpose. Those specific scenes are different than when DNR is applied. See, DNR takes natural film grain out and that's when you notice the film grain kind of disappearing or getting very light. This is not the case in those scenes. It's simply they did use some filters and camera lenses to give it that kind of effect where it kind of gives it a fantasy, kind of hazy, like fog in the scene. Now there is scenes where there is fog, but I'm talking about in scenes where there's no fog. It just kind of gives that an overall appearance of a softer, hazier scene. You can see the film grain just fine. They didn't use DNR in those scenes. That's specific to the camera lenses and filters that were used when filming this. That won't ever go away no matter how many times they scan or restore the original elements. That is not something wrong with this. And if you wanna know more descriptions and explanations about that, I've talked about that hundreds of times over the years here on my YouTube channel. It's really important as a reviewer to understand the original film elements before you dive into reviewing any film. See, that's something that I've encountered over the years is there is tons and tons of people that claim they're reviewing things that have no clue about the actual film elements, the original restoration process, the original film it was filmed on. And that's an important thing to understand when you go in to do these reviews. Otherwise, you do give false and inaccurate reviews. That's something that I take a lot of time and research to make sure I understand what was used when creating this, what they went into when creating each and every one of these. So that way when I give that review score, you understand the elements that were used that is presenting if this is properly done or if it's a really bad transfer. In this case, those scenes, other than, like I said, that final battle scene and one other one, those are the only instances of where there was some very slight DNR applied to control, it seems like, what film grain was on there. But otherwise, the rest of those scenes are intentional where they do have camera lenses applied on them. Now, talking about the audio on this, this does have English Dolby Atmos. And I will tell you, it was a very active audio mix. It moved things around a lot. It used the height channels very well. I was surprised actually for a Dolby Atmos mix on a film from 1981, how good of a job Paramount Studios did implementing Dolby Atmos into this. It was one of those that was done surprisingly well and is a very robust and enjoyable Dolby Atmos mix that lended to why I think this ended up turning out so well is because when you add that Dolby Atmos with the upgrade with the native 4K that they did on this and how nice that image looks, it really does lend to a very nice presentation on this. Now, the reason why there's no 4K versus Blu-ray is you probably figured out this is a 4K Ultra HD only release. 
It wasn't ever released on Blu-ray. So the only thing that ever existed was the old DVDs. And to tell you, compared to the DVDs, this obviously blows that out of the water. But as far as compared to the other 4Ks, when I get to my review score, you'll understand where this sits image and sound quality wise when I get to my review score here at the end. Now showing you what you get in this, I opted for the limited edition Steelbook set because I think Paramount has been doing a great job with their Steelbooks. They don't charge a premium dollar for them and they're really cool collectibles. This one comes with a really nice shiny metallic outside slipcover has actually shiny gold on it, it says Dragon Slayer on it. Then on the back here, it talks about the film. It does say it includes a digital movies code from obviously your digital copy in here, and that is 100% completely wrong. I'm gonna point that out because on the front here, it also says digital copy code. Now I did reach out to Paramount Studios. This is one of the negative things of this set. It seems like they had an issue when producing this, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, it should have been caught when they were actually producing this that the digital copy codes were not included. And for the limited edition steelbooks, it seems like it's a widespread issue. Almost everybody that I've talked to and everybody else, I got two of these. Neither of them had digital copy codes in them. After reaching out to Paramount, they did say if you contact them and request them, they'll ask you to basically verify that you bought the copy and then they'll actually send you one separately. But that is something that I wish they would have caught initially because I don't like having to constantly reach out to these studios to get them to send either replacement discs or digital copy codes. But at least the digital copy code's easy. They can just send it to you by email if that's how you're wanting it. So the nice thing is at least that's an easy fix. But if you buy this limited edition steelbook, be aware that almost all of these are coming with no digital copy codes included. So you will need to reach out for Paramount for those. Otherwise, the standard editions from what I'm understanding is, is those did have them included. It just seemed to be miss out on the limited edition sets. Now, when you get to the back here, it does have a really nice back shiny slip cover on that. I really like the artwork on the back here. Now, this is where I think the Steelbook shines. It has shiny metallic with really shiny, like fiery pieces on it. I think the artwork of the dragon is just awesome on this. On the side, it says Dragon Slayer and shiny red metallic. On the back here, it's the dragon's eye. So again, because they don't charge a premium price for these, literally the price tag for these limited edition steelbooks, they're right around that $20 mark. That's a great price point to be able to collect and own these. So in my personal opinion, other than the hiccup of them not including the digital copy code in the limited editions, I would buy this, just contact Paramount for your digital copy code, but overall the price point for this is such an awesome collectible. But I will list both of them, the Steelbook Limited Edition and the Standard Edition in the description section and as a pinned comment in the comment section below. So if you decide you want to buy either of them, they'll both be listed down there for you to order. Now, when you get inside here, it does have inside artwork. It says some words on here from the movie. And then over here, it has your 4K disc, which is a black 4K disc. It is a BD66. I always exclusively test all of them. And this is 100% region free. So no matter what territory you live in worldwide, if you're wanting to buy this in either edition, like I said, I've posted those links down below, but the disc is 100% region free, so you'll be able to access it and watch it anywhere. One other thing I wanted to touch on was the special features. It does get a new commentary with the original director, Matthew Robbins and Gomero Del Toro. Screen tests, Slayer of Dragons, these are all in HD. Original theatrical trailer, all in HD. So you do get those all included on the 4K Ultra HD disc as well. Now I did some more of my exclusive testing and the rough average bitrate on this was a healthy 63 megabits per second. It's not the most amazing. I mean, it is on a BD66. I personally think if they would have done a BD100 with the special features and the audio mix and the subtitles, you know, you get English and French subtitles on this as well. But as far as that goes, I think if they would have put it on a BD100 and given it even more room to breathe, it might have enhanced it and given it a little bit more detail, though, as I said, it's still a very nice looking presentation. Now getting to my review score here for Dragon Slayer on 4K Ultra HD. Other than those hiccups that I was talking about, this gets an excellent 9.2. It would have gotten a much better review score if it wouldn't have had some of those issues I mentioned before. And I wish they wouldn't have used any DNR, even in those two brief scenes, I understand they were trying to control the film grain because there was some fluctuations and it was a little heavier in those scenes, but I would rather them not use the program Neat to try to get rid of that. I would rather them just leave it because there's more detail in those scenes. But again, it's so brief that most people aren't ever gonna notice it. The only reason I do is because I test and analyze all of these things daily and every single week exclusively here on my YouTube channel, I run into more and more of that and I can see the differences between it easily. 
most people probably aren't going to notice that. And the presentation on this with the depth and detail in the image is very nicely done and it is a great job that Paramount did on this. It is an excellent 9.2. This is the best Dragon Slayer has ever looked and is one of those films that I'm really surprised did get this level of a 4K restoration, especially when you consider that there's so many other films out there that I think of are bigger releases that haven't gotten 4K restorations or releases. I'm surprised this one got it, though I am happy because it is one of those, like I said, Disney live action fantasies from the 80s that it is kind of a cool thing to see how it fits in Disney's like realm is the fact of that it does remind me of like a Black Cauldron, Sleeping Beauty, a bunch of different elements of their animated films combined together into a live action dark fantasy that I do enjoy. And it is one of those that's rated PG, but if it was rated today, it definitely would be rated PG-13 or higher possibly. I don't know that we get to an R, but it would be at least a PG-13. It does have some darker themes and darker stories behind it, so it's not really like a kid's fantasy. So keep that in mind when going in to watch this. But it's a great film from the 80s that's fun to experience and is highly recommended on this 4K Ultra HD release. So if you haven't checked out this film or bought it yet, make sure to go down to those links I've posted in the description section and as a pinned comment in the comment section below. It takes you straight out to Amazon to buy your copy. Never costs you even a penny extra when you click on those links, but they do help to support this channel just a tiny bit. Let me know your thoughts on this film. Did you see this film originally in 1981 when it came out? Make sure to start that conversation in the comments section below and let me know if this is one you're excited for now after hearing my review score, if it's one you're excited to dive into because you've never seen it. Make sure to start that conversation in the comments section below and let me know whether you're going to get the standard edition or the steelbook. As always, if you enjoy all my hard work, my heart and soul that I put into every single video I create here on my YouTube channel, make sure to join my Collector's VIP Club. It costs you less than a couple of bucks every month, so less than the price of a cup of coffee but it drastically makes a difference in me being able to continue to create all of these videos for all of you to watch here on this YouTube channel. Just because you get to watch this video for free does not mean it's free for me to make. It takes me tons of time and work every single day to create every single one of these videos. I'm not sponsored and paid by anybody. The only way I can always continue to do this is through you, my Collectors VIP Club member support, so if you're a viewer on my channel and you're a subscriber and you enjoy this and you watch these videos regularly, you need to join my Collector's VIP Club to support the creation of these videos. As always, I truly hope all of you have a blessed day and I've always got something new, exclusive, and exciting coming out very soon.